Welcome in, everybody, to the flagship podcast. I am Chip Brown of Horns 24-7, joined, as always, by our fearless leader, uh, the managing editor of Horns 24-7, Taylor Estes. And unfortunately, uh, Taylor, we are, we're back to talk about the same story for the Texas Longhorns. It was another example of a team that cannot play complementary football uh, when it matters most. It looked like maybe for a second in the third quarter of this game, Texas would play some complimentary football when the offense finally got going under Hudson Card, but then the defense gives up a bunch of third and longs, even a fourth and five on a scoring drive by West Virginia, and it it gets away from the Longhorns, or any chance of a comeback gets away. Yeah, I mean, Chip, this is just almost the... The worst ending to obviously there's another game left on the schedule. Clearly, I'm not trying to overlook that. But the fact that the season is over at this point with Texas dropping its uh, seventh game, six in a row. And, um, you know, in a game that they really had the chance, they started, as you mentioned, they started really trying to claw back. They started to move the ball offensively. Hudson Card provided a much needed spark by the Texas offense um, and allowed the Texas offense, honestly, to be more than just one dimensional, which has really been one of the biggest issues I feel for Texas offensively in recent games, you know, and and uh, the running game started clicking, Hudson Card you know, made some some key plays there. But you're right. I mean, the inability at the start of the game for Texas to stay on the field and convert third downs offensively, and then the inability of the defense to get off the field on third downs, especially third and long, um, as, you know, with the game actually on the line and Texas in a position to really strike, it just, it was unfortunately for Texas fans, the the perfect end or worst end of a terrible season. But it, it ended up being essentially what you've seen from Texas a lot this year. It's just, as you mentioned, they, they have had this constant inability to play complimentary football. And I don't know who that falls on. I don't know if that falls on the coaches. I don't know if it falls on the players. But all I know is there is some sort of roadblock that Texas has with this team unable to really play complimentary football for four quarters. That was a key to this game. And that's been a key to the game for Texas throughout the last six game losing streak. And once again, ends you know, not in the Longhorns favor. Well, it it's, it's, uh, it's crazy because Texas made some adjustments in this game um, to get the running game going. They went to more of a split zone attack where the offensive line flows in one direction and the tight end goes back against that flow and seals the backside or non-play side defensive end. And it really got the running game going. You saw Keelan Robinson uh, finally have a breakout game. I mean, he and Roshan Johnson uh, are having to carry the load now that Bijan Bijan Robinson is out for the season after dislocating his elbow last week against Kansas. Um, both running backs had some nice runs, um, you know, in that split zone attack. Uh, Keelan Robinson with a 49-yard touchdown run. That um, They made that adjustment late in the first half while Casey Thompson was still in the game. They end up getting a 50-yard field goal. Uh, well, a 50-yard field goal after Keelan Robinson's 49-yard touchdown run to cut the halftime deficit to 21-10. Hudson Card comes out. Uh, at quarterback goes, they run the ball again for, you know, two beautiful running plays. Then they go to the air and throw three straight incompletions and go five and out. After that, Steve Sarkeesian did a much better job of mixing the run with the play action. That's when we saw the two nice touchdown drives from Hudson Card. But Taylor, as if things, you can't make this stuff up. With Texas driving to try to you know, tie the game. Steve Sarkeesian went for two with 12.25 left, which makes no sense. Just kick the field goal. Don't go for two until you absolutely have to have it. Um, And so Texas is down eight, but they're driving. They're in West Virginia territory. And on the same play, Hudson Card, Junior Angelau, and Keelan Robinson all go down with an injury with 3.46 left. In comes Casey Thompson. And he throws a post route to 
Xavier Worthy, who slows down on the play, and it turns into an easy interception for West Virginia. Was terrib- it was a terrible decision by Casey. I and mean, Marcus Washington was wide open. That was a terrible decision by Casey Thompson. Okay, well, he threw a post route to Xavier Worthy, who decision. You're right. yeah. slowed down on the play, just like Xavier Worthy did last week against Kansas when he cut behind the defender and gave up another easy interception. So I don't know. I mean, you can't make this stuff up, but they end up getting another chance. It it gets even weirder. They end up getting another chance um, to score. And, well, not to score, but with 36 seconds left, they have the ball at their own 36. Casey Thompson throws a pass and re-injures his thumb on his throwing hand, and Hudson Card comes back into the game after limping off. Yeah, he can't even put weight on his leg. I mean, Casey Thompson, in my opinion, had to stick it out there. I mean, unless his thumb's broken, which we we did not get an injury update on uh, either one of the quarterbacks after the game from, or any injured players for that matter, from C. Sarkeesian. But you, you've got to you've got to suck it up there. I mean, Casey Thompson. Okay, we don't know what happened Texas. with Casey Thompson on that okay, injury, but, okay, but, but still, it's, it's not. We can't. The point make is the throwing the the whole thumb injury. He threw six touchdowns last week, so that's not an excuse anymore. Unless he re-injured it on that play. Yeah, and well, it flares up forward, in the cold, and that. it was forty degrees that. at West Virginia. So, um, I, I it was listen, pretty cold I'm, last weekend too. <laughs> Let's be honest. No, it wasn't. It wasn't cold yes, at all. Yes, yes, was I was wearing a big old heavy coat trying to rush to the the car after the Kansas game. It was absolutely cold. Okay. It wasn't as cold well, as today. But you're on. the meteorologist, <laughs> and the Casey Thompson was, was terrible Casey today. Thompson was terrible today. Hudson yeah. Card was you know provided a spark for them. That's great. And the defense, which played fantastic against the run for mm-hmm. two and a half quarters, gives up a third and eighteen. Third and eighteen, and the defense implodes after that. Yeah. Darian Dunn get th- throws a punch at a player, gets an unsportsmanlike conduct flag. They start giving up big running plays. They give up a touchdown on that drive. And then the defense gives up a third and 15, a third and five, a fourth and five mm-hmm. to a field goal. And you're just going, I mean, they had nine tackles for loss, the Texas defense. DeMarvian Overshawn, who started the game in a boot because of a turf toe in his street clothes, Ends up getting dressed and plays in this game. He only had two tackles, but I mean, the defense was making some plays. Yeah. And, you know, Ben Davis had a great game. He had a sack, he had a, a tackle for loss, but they couldn't play complimentary football when they had to. And, you know, Cameron Dicker, who had another great game, 44 yards per punt, kicked a 50 yard field goal. All that stuff goes out the window because Texas can't play complimentary football. And they are now, they've lost six straight. They do have a home game against K-State next week. Who knows who's going to be healthy for that one with uh, Keelan Robinson, as we mentioned, Hudson Card, Casey Thompson. They're all hurt. Ben Ballard um, is the third string quarterback. He's a walk-on from Hyde Park in Austin. Uh, Is he going to be starting the K-State game? Who knows? I mean, talk about the like worse situation, right, Chip? I mean, it's been it's been the same story different week, I feel like, with the inability to play complimentary football. There's no denying that. I mean, there have been games where both sides of the ball have done enough to at least keep them in the games, and it just seems to go out the window. It, it alternates every week. Exactly. It's like once one week the defense is terrible, next week the offense or the defense is good. I mean, it, it, it's un it's like it's like covering somebody that is bipolar or something. You just never know what you're going to get from this Texas football team. And I mean, honestly, at this point, like, I, I don't want to be the doom and gloom Debbie Downer because I know that Texas fans are already down enough on themselves. But at this point, honestly, you're just sitting here. It's like, let's just take them out to pasture and just end it. Because at this point, this Texas team, even if they found a way to win this game, I don't necessarily think that they're going to go out and beat Kansas State next week. If Skylar Thompson and Deuce Vaughn are as on as they were, say, against West Virginia two weeks ago, then Texas was already probably you know, going to be a substantial underdog, I would imagine, in that game. And rightfully so. I mean, this team is... It, it lacks an identity and it has really lacked that identity in the worst stretch possible in the toughest stretch of the season. And it dates back to, 
you know, Oklahoma. I mean, the offense was rolling, rolling, and then all of a sudden the defense can't do anything, and that leads to, a, you know, what the outcome of that was, and Texas hasn't won a game since then. And it's just – it's back and forth. It's, it's just – it's time that the season ends. I think that the biggest thing – you know, you talk about some of the third down conversions. I mean, there was one play. I can't, I think it was, uh, I think four minutes in the third quarter left, but Jaron Thompson is one of the long third down, um, you know, conversions that West Virginia ended up getting. It was like Jaron Thompson was allergic to contact. It was like, what are you doing? Like he was there to make a play and he didn't jump in. And at some point, these type of constant players that seem to continually make those type of Pro, like errors in games when it matters most, the sooner Steve Sarkeesian can get those guys out of the locker room, the better, in my opinion. And Texas at this point, you know, sitting here at four and seven on the year with one game left, there's no hope for bowl eligibility. It's essentially the 2015 season all over again. And who knows, maybe they'll come out and shock Kansas State next weekend like they did Baylor at the end of the 2015 season to win five games. But still, the season's over for Texas. And the sooner that Steve Sarkeesian can get guys in the locker room that are not just going to be guys that are going to make plays when their number is called, but also be leaders. Cause clearly this team is lacking leadership. And I think it starts at quarterback and that goes on both Casey Thompson and Hudson card. There's no leadership at quarterback until Texas can get somebody in the locker room or a group of players that step up and hold these other players accountable. It's not going to get any better. And Steve Sarkeesian has a ton of work to do. And I think it starts at getting a transfer portal quarterback that should be probably that and off, you know, the offensive line, I'm not going to bash them. They play pretty well today, but there's no doubt that the offensive line does need more players on the, especially from a depth perception or a depth standpoint. And honestly, probably their starting line. They need, they need more guys the offensive line. But I think that the first, the first order of business is finding a quarterback from the transfer portal. That's not only going to be efficient and not be the reason why you lose games, but also be a leader for the offense. And that's what Texas is lacking right now. Well, Steve Sarkeesian, that's his side of the ball. That's his expertise. He's the quarterback developer. Um, Casey Thompson, Hudson Card um, should both be further along than they are. But at the same time, um, there's been, you know, no real uh, commitment from Steve Sarkeesian to to either one of these quarterbacks. So but would you, would you, if you were, well, can I finish in? the, the, the worst case scenario is throwing, you know, both of these guys away, going to the portal, bringing in someone who's not worked in this offense. I mean, there's no sure thing in the, in the portal, you know, that's, you're starting over uh, from scratch again, but I mean, Steve Sarkeesian, this is his side of the ball. This is what, you know, he's a great offensive mind. We're waiting to see if he's a really good head coach again. We know he's a really good offensive mind, but the adjustments or lack of adjustments um, and on defense today, they finally got out of too high safety and go to single high and they're making, you know, good plays in the running game. They got torched uh, in the passing game. Jarrett Dagey, who's talking about coming back for his super senior season next year, had a they let him get hot. He was 27 of 43, over 300 yards passing, three touchdowns. He kept finding soft spots in the zone and exploiting them. And and so it's just frustrating. I mean, think about what you're saying. You're saying you'd like to see them shut down the season. And it's because it's so exhausting to watch this team. It's like watching a 12-year-old learn how to drive a stick shift. You're just it's jerks forward and you know, backward and you're, you're like, you don't know what to think, but they can't put two halves of football together. Steve Sarkeesian yeah. said on Monday, the only complete game this team played was its opener. And it's true. They yeah. played a complete game, a complimentary football game against a good team, um, Louisiana. And we haven't seen it since it's, it's crazy. Um, and, and it's, it's everything it's coaches, it's players, it's, it's everything. And, uh, and now, you know, Steve Sarkeesian on Monday talked about bringing in 33 new players. So we're back in complete rebuild mode. You're talking about, you know, going and getting a, a portal quarterback. This is a complete rebuild if that's where we are. And, and we'll see if, if it's the players or it's the coaches, but 
anytime you're talking rebuild, you're buying yourself another season. And that's, that's just not what, uh, and I don't think that's where we started the season after that complete win against Louisiana. I don't think anyone saw in a four and one start. Anyone saw this six straight losses in mind boggling, mind numbing fashion. Yeah, no, you're right. I mean, nobody, nobody expected this. I mean, you go back, we talked about this chip on Monday, you know, after the, the loss to Oklahoma, Steve Sarkeesian talked about he would like a rematch to Oklahoma in the big 12 title game. And that really was not out of the question. It really wasn't. That was actually a possibility for Texas because they were so close in that game. And then the constant drop off. And it's like, Anytime this team gets any momentum, the only thing you have to basically prepare yourself for is that momentum stopping, because I think that's what this team has shown over and over again. Obviously, you know, it's going to be a risk to go in the portal to get a quarterback. But Steve Sarkeesian at a place like the University of Texas, which has turned over, you know, back to back head coaches and not giving that they, they neither the last two head coaches at Texas have not finished their contract. They've not actually coached for the entirety of their contract. And when you're at a place like Texas, I wouldn't, I, I think that he actually may buy himself more time by going to the portal rather than not going to the portal at this point for a quarterback, because especially in the big 12 and in college football in general, you don't need a quarterback to be the guy that's going to win every single game for you, but you need a quarterback that's not going to lose games for you. And I don't know if Texas has that quarterback on this roster right now. If Steve Sarkeesian goes to the transfer portal and gets a guy and it doesn't work, at least he tried. Not going to the transfer portal at this point essentially sets him up to have to explain himself as to why he didn't try when, you know, 11 games into the season, he's not really definitive in who the who the guy of the future is. Then that's that's a lack of looking ahead. That's a lack of, you know, um, what a head coach should be doing, especially if your side of the ball is on offense and you are the quarterback guru. I mean, look at what he did at Alabama. You know, they had uh, Bryce Young, a five-star recruit coming in, and Steve Sarkeesian went for Mac Jones. Well, Mac Jones is starting in the NFL right now. So clearly he knows what he's doing when it comes to that position. I just don't think he has the quarterback on this roster right now. And maybe one of these guys will develop into it. I don't know. But I think it's at this point way too risky for Steve Sarkeesian being at a place like Texas that is consistently turned over staff, turned over head coaches. The only consistent thing that has happened with Texas football in the last decade has been change. When you're at a place like that, you don't really have time to wait it out to see if one of these quarterback plays, you know, does something that is going to change, you know, the trajectory of the program. And right now I don't think there's anything on paper that shows either one of these guys is one of the guys, even, even though I will say, Casey Thomas has been very good in games and Hudson card when he came off the bench today, it's probably one of the better performances that he has come, especially in crunch time, you know, with the um, being in a really high pressure situation. I feel like he did well, but I would, if I were Steve Sarkeesian, I would not be betting my future on either one of these quarterbacks right now. I would be hoping that the administration sees if I go to the portal, because I don't believe I have the quarterback on this roster that maybe it will buy him a little bit more time because at least he tried. Yeah, and I think he will go to the portal, and and who knows what that means for, uh, you know what that does to Casey Thompson and Hudson Card. Do they yeah, do they stick around? Do they leave? Yeah. I mean, what it's um, there's a lot of disconnect going on inside this program right now, and um, you know I think the players have been looking for answers, especially on defense. They've been looking for adjustments from Pete Kwiatkowski. They got some today. It worked for a while. Um, they, they stopped the run, like I said, for two and a half quarters. Uh, very reminiscent of Iowa State, where the defense plays well uh, for a while and then, you know, implodes. And it's at like least there was at you least know. there was an answer from the offense somewhat in the second half of this game. But I, I mean, West Virginia's pass defense is not as good as. Iowa State's pass defense. They were gettable. Um, and you had, you know, you just you just had all kinds of you had drops again today. The first three possessions of Texas, there was a drop by Xavier Worthy, a drop on a 23-yard pass by Marcus Washington, who was wide open, hit him in the hands. Um, I mean, it's just you can't make this stuff up. This team 
you don't know what you're getting from week to week, and that's coaching. I mean, the players have to be ready. Uh, the players have to make plays, but the coaches have to have them in a mindset to be ready to make plays. And why is it when they go on the road, they are terrible on offense? Right. Um, and know. I think that comes back to the leadership aspect of it, Chip. I mean, you you need leadership, obviously, from the coaches, but – the most detrimental leadership that you need is in the locker room from the players and holding each other accountable. Say what you will about Sam Ellinger, whether he, obviously he wasn't the you know world's greatest quarterback in the history of college football. Nobody would ever even say that, but his leadership was top notch. I mean, you can never question his leadership and his drive to make sure if he had to put the game on his back, he would. And you didn't necessarily sat there and question if he could do it. Because that's the type of leader that he was. And that's, in my opinion, Chip, that is contagious. And if you don't have that, it's contagious too to not have that because people are looking around thinking who's going to make the plays instead of looking at themselves because they don't have somebody that's going to stand there and say, it needs to be you. It needs to be me. It needs to be all of us. We all need to make these plays. Texas has no leadership. And, um, you know, again, say what you will about Ellinger, but him – and his leadership is the biggest thing that this team has lost, in my opinion, because obviously Casey Thompson has shown he's been able to make the plays to win games. He's, you know, there have been a couple of losses that definitely did not fall on him. No, no way. Like, I'm not going to blame the Oklahoma game on him. I'm not going to blame, you know, the, um, the Kansas even, or Baylor. Yeah. Kansas on him. No, I'm not going to do that because it wasn't it wasn't on him. But what Texas is lacking is that leadership, and I think it needs to start at quarterback. And who knows if you can find that in the portal even. I mean, if, if you're going for somebody in the portal, you, you better pray that you get it right. But at this point, I don't think that there's any you know, question that Texas needs to at least evaluate where leadership is, where it's lacking, and where they can get it elsewhere because clearly it's not on this roster right now. Yeah, and think about where this team was earlier in the year when they – Played the complete game against Louisiana, um, you know, rolled Texas Tech, and then, you know, offensively put up 48 points against OU. Um, Casey Thompson gets injured in that game. Jordan Whittington gets injured in that game. And you're right. I mean, just little, I mean, not little hiccups. Those are significant hiccups. Jordan Whittington, by the way, played today mm -hmm. and didn't, wasn't targeted and until the two point conversion pass um, that failed, that was broken up. He didn't catch a pass in this game. Um, One but, target, no catches. Yeah. Yeah. What a gutsy um, effort by Jordan Whittington to, to get back out there. Um, but Taylor will leave it there uh, next week. The Longhorns will finish against K State. Um, frustrating day for uh, Longhorn Nation for sure. Uh, a lot of looking toward next year, and um, and so we'll we'll try Maybe to keep it. Maybe the future will be brighter. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll try right. to keep we'll it focused <laughs> on uh, you know the last game of the season against K State. But um, thanks everybody for listening. For Taylor Estes, I am Chip Brown. We'll see you over at Horns247.com, and of course on the Horns247 YouTube channel. Make sure you're subscribed there as well. Until next time, stay safe and keep the faith.